Uh, my name is Yan Zhong Huang. I'm a senior fellow for global health at the Council on Foreign Relations. My book is entitled Governing Health in Contemporary China. Well, the writing of this book is driven by essentially a puzzle. That is, we have seen over the past decades uh, the reform and opening up has lifted hundreds of millions of people out of poverty. But that achievement has not been translated into similar gains in healthcare sector. In fact, we've seen that uh, over the past three decades, uh, there's a stagnation of the uh, people's health status improvement. According to uh, the World Bank data, uh, over the past three decades, uh, there are only seven years of average life expectancy improvement uh, in China. Um, and But uh, for countries that had the similar life expectancy uh, in, in the early 1980s, well, they have um, improved from 7 to 14 years old uh, life expectancy, even though these countries had much slower economic growth. So I want to explain why is that the case. Even if you look at the official statistical data, in 1949, the average life expectancy was 35 years old. In 1981, uh, that was about 67, 68. Right? And today, it's about uh, 78. Right? So over the past three decades, there was at most 10 years old improvement in average life expectancy. So eight, more than 80% of the improvement actually was achieved in the more era. And secondly, if you compare it horizontally right, with other countries, right, 1981, right, countries with a similar health uh, um, status, right, countries like Mexico, Colombia, Malaysia, well, they achieved a similar magnitude of improvement between 1981 and today, right, even though they had much slower economic growth rate. In this book, I try to build a theoretical model explaining uh, the health system transition in China. Basically, I hypothesized that there is a shift of polity from what I would call bandwagon to buck passing polity. Right? Simply speaking, uh, in the more era, uh, you have whatever Chairman Mao said, people are going to follow or act upon what he said. But uh, uh, in the post Mao era, uh, under this so called broad passing polity, right, uh, there was no longer a superordinate policy actor such as Mao. There are also involvement of multiple agencies you know, from different functional domains. So as a result, there was always policy immobilism, coordination problems that expanded the gap between policy preference and the actual policy outcomes. So that is the theoretical foundation of that book. Uh, essentially, I want to make the central argument that the crisis in Chinese health sector is not simply a public health problem, it is a governance pro uh, crisis. You know, basically, um, there are problems of incentives, effectiveness, um, and capabilities uh, in Chinese healthcare sector. Several problems associated with the stagnating uh, healthcare indicators and health status. One is that um, the negative health outcomes often are associated with uh, development problems. So uh, the stagnating health improvement threaten uh, the um, development outcomes in China, actually even threatening uh, to bring down some of the people who are already lifted out of poverty to be brought down to the poverty level. And second, there's also a legitimacy problem because if the government is perceived as incapable of providing uh, the necessary public health services, people would feel that they don't have to co collaborate or cooperate with the government uh, in uh, government-sponsored projects. Right? So there's a legitimacy issue here. And also, there might be some broadly um, consequences for social political stability, because this is 
statistical analysis suggesting that uh, if the government has very poor health indicators, that is often associated, actually highly correlated with unusual regime change or revolutionary uh, change.